Welcome to another episode of Jim's Love My Garden. So um, the uh, the sunflowers are uh, more than ready to go out now, so I'm going to be planting those out, um, and also the uh, the two gourds. So we've got the birdhouse gourd, which are these two here, and there's actually one just coming there, um, and then we've got these two um, ivory gourds there. So I'll be planting them in um, along the uh, the framework where these spally trees are. So what I've done is I've just gone up and dug um, all up the border, made sure I've got all the weeds out. Um, and made it nice and nice and loose for them to go in. And I've just cut back the um, the justabri bushes slightly, um, just 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 to take them back a little bit. I will take a, f um, a few bits more off on the strawberry side, but um, that's basically um, ready to go now. So what we're doing is putting a gourd sort of at, at the end. So the two um, birdhouse gourds will go at each end, and then the two um, ivory gourds will go kind of in the middle. And then I'll be interspersing those with um, some sunflowers um, to grow up this frame along with all the rest of the trees. Okay, so the two um, the, the, the birdhouse gourds out of all of the ones that I uh, actually planted, um, only actually two have come. So uh, what I will be doing is putting a few more seeds in. Now, if you remember last year, um, the first batch that I put in didn't grow particularly well, and I think it's worth um, germinating these um, a little bit later um, because I think. They don't do so well when you have sort of hot and cold um, spells in the weather. But um, so that's the first one. And all I've basically done is planted it at the same level as it was in the pot, and uh, that'll grow up in a way along the frame quite nicely. Okay, and these are the um, the ivy gourds. Now what I'm going to do is take off um, these seed leaves that are slightly damaged. Now again, in exactly the same way, I'm going to plant this um, so that it's. Uh, just at the same level as it was in the pot. So I'm actually going to put the, the plant over here. Now I know it's slightly off, so I'm just ready because I've got a metal post here. I know there's um, I just want to make sure that there's plenty of ground for the yeah there's plenty of places for the roots to grow there. So I've just made a hole there. Um, tap the tap the gourd out like that. As you can see it's not too not too pot bound. And I'm plant placing it in there. Um, so it's at the same height as it was when it was in the original pot. And all I need to do now is give that a bit of water just to settle it in. And uh, that should grow away quite nicely and up the frame. Okay, and I'm now going to put the, uh, the sunflowers in. So all I need to do again is make a hole. Uh, you can plant these slightly deeper than they were in the pot, so that's not too much of an issue. So all I'm going to do is get it out of the pot like that. Now these are seed that I saved myself last year. Oh, I just probably meant like that. Now, with all sunflowers, most certainly the uh, the larger ones like this, you will need support. And I've had a couple of comments on about supporting um, sunflowers. So what I suggest you do is um, put a bamboo cane up it, a good thick uh, bamboo cane. You know the ones that like your size of your finger at least. Um, and then what you need to do, it's about three foot up. You need to try and support it again because bamboo could potentially. Break. Now when the flowers form on these giant sunflowers, they do get quite top heavy and when it rains they get even heavier and then if the wind blows um, it will sway backwards and forwards and I have had um, sort of in sort of August time when you, you are prone to get a bit of rain and the, and the, and the flowers are formed, um, they can sort of sway about a bit and uh, I have had some break off at the bottom when the sort of eight foot high. So um, always support them as much as you possibly can do. Um, I put, you know, if you haven't got a frame lock I've got here, um, which is a steel frame, um, I'll put some good sized canes in. Um, 
A bamboo should just about do it, but if I was you, I'd put something a bit more substantial, like either a wooden cane or a steel pole. And then, um, fingers crossed, um, they should stay upright. But most certainly the, the, the giant ones, the ones that get to over sort of four feet high, you most certainly need to support them. Any that are sort of shorter, um, like the multiple headed ones, uh, you, you may you may get away with not actually supporting them. The other thing you can do is obviously grow them up a wall or just put them in a really sheltered spot but uh, even if they're in a sheltered spot uh, you know if it rains they can get a bit top heavy and, and are prone to toppling over. Okay so we've got a birdhouse gourd at the end here and then every kind of 14, 18 inches now we've got a sunflower. I'll put it on that side so it grows on this side of the frame which is obviously the side where the sun comes round. Uh, and then here we've got a, uh, an ivy gourd which will grow up and across. Uh, another ivy gourd there. Obviously in the middle here it gets a little bit more difficult so I've got one sunflower there, I don't know if you can see, it's just there. Uh, there's a couple under there, one more there. Um, then we've got a few more. There's one sunflower there uh, and there and then obviously we've got the, the um, birdhouse gourd at the end there. Now all I need to do now is basically just water those in and uh, as soon as the as soon as the sunflowers get a little bit bigger what I'll be able to do is tie that back um, onto the frame. Obviously this, this tree here needs to be tied onto the frame kind of up here which is something else I need to get around to in a moment. Um, and then all I need to do then is just tie the, the sunflower on there but the thing you need to remember with sunflowers is obviously the stalk's going to get bigger and bigger as it grows. So whatever you tie it on with, if you tie it on with say nylon string, you'll need to cut that nylon string off um, in a few weeks time because um, obviously the stalk will get that big that the nylon string will start to cut into it. So if, you, if you're not putting anything sort of elastic on it or something like that, you know, just keep your eye on it. As soon as it starts to, or just before it starts to cut into the stem, what you'll need to do is cut that off and either put a big one on. What I've done in the past uh, is put these on. And what this is, um, it's a piece of piece of hose with a cable tie through it, and that's just about the size of a, um, a sunflower stalk when it's fully grown. So what you do is you put that over, if you can just imagine, put that over the plant when it's young, like that, and then tie that on with another cable tie onto the frame like that, and then that will support it. Um, so if it blows backwards and forwards, it'll support it in there. But as the as the um, stalk gets bigger, this won't cut into it, um, and that'll that'll be okay for it, um, y y you know, for all season. So all that is is just um, about six inches of old hose pipe, with a cable tie pushed through it and then tied up to form a loop, uh, which you know which won't cut into the stem in any way, shape, or form. And all I need to do is tie that with another cable tie or some string onto the framework like that. But obviously, when the when the plant's young like that, you can easily fit it over. Um, like that, and then just just tie that on there, and then that will stop the um, the other sunflower rocking about in the wind and potentially getting snapped off. Okay, so I'm just putting in the um, asparagus peas now. Admittedly, these plants do look a little bit stressed. Um, really, to be honest with you, they should have gone in a few weeks ago, um, but with one thing or another, I just haven't got around to doing it. But all I've done is I've dug this ground over. Um, this is our um, plantier chicken manure and stuff like that. And now I'm hoping, um, all things being well, that these plants will recover. So they've got a good uh, root root on them there. And they have actually started to flower. And I think that's probably because they're a little bit stressed. Now, they were in the greenhouse um, and it did get really hot in there last week. Um, and I think that's what's um, basically caused the problem with them. So I'm just pulling out any weeds that I see in there with them. So I'm, I'm just going to plant these around um, sort of nine inches apart, like that. Um, I've not grown these before, and what I'm going to be doing, um, as soon as I've um, planted these, I'm going to put a few, I'm going to leave them in here for a, um, a couple of weeks just to make sure that they're growing okay. And then uh, what I'm going to do then is uh, put some canes up for them so they've got somewhere to climb. But I'm just going to make sure that they, they actually do grow because uh, at the moment they're not looking very happy with themselves because of the heat. Um, along with some other plants that were in the greenhouse at the same time, to be honest with you, there's, there's, there's been quite a few plants that have suffered uh, because of the heat. Uh, I'm sure you've had uh, similar 
similar scenarios. Now this is all the this that I'm pulling out here. This is the the corn that's grown in this ground. I've dug out as much as I can, but uh, I'm hoping the rest of it will. Uh, um, I'm hoping the rest of it will die off that's been buried. So I'm just going to put the rest of these in and give them a really good watering, and then uh, I'm going to um, put um, some, as I say, put some canes on them in a week or so when when I know they're actually starting to grow, um, and then I'm going to put in about uh, probably about um, ten plants. I know that's probably more than you know, a lot of people recommend to say these things when they do grow. Um, they get quite big and they, they crop in quite a lot, but uh, as I'm not sure how many of these are going to survive, if any, um, I'm just going to put them all in here and then we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. So uh, anyway, that's the asparagus peas. Okay, so as you can see, I've dug this um, this ground over. This is just next to the greenhouse. Um, I've dug all this over this morning, so it's um, it's all nice and all nice and loose. So it's time to put in the um, two vegetables. The first one has been sent up by um, Tina and Jason. This uh, yakon. I've not grown this before, but I'll be planting those three in. Um, and the second thing is the aloko, which is this um, plant here, which is kind of like a funny little potato. I grew it last year. Um, now with the with the aloko, uh, you can either eat the tops as a salad, or underneath you get like corms like small, colourful potatoes, um, and basically you can uh, you can eat those just like basically like potatoes. So what I'll be doing now is planting those two um, in that sideboard on the other side of the green. Okay, so this ground's a little bit shallow. Um, there's there's basically a rock underneath here. So at this far end here, um, I have. Um, around about a foot's worth of soil before it, um, basically I hit rock. And then here I've got at least a couple of feet. So what I'll be doing is planting them at this end. So I know they've got plenty of uh, room underneath them to, to grow. So I'll just put the, um, the Luco in first, which will be in kind of this area here. And then I'll put the, um, the Yakon in this bit here. Okay, so first to go in is the, um, the Akulo. Um, and this is the, basically I've had loads of, um, the reason I've dug it over is I've had loads of um, corn growing in here, um, which is coming from the straw if you haven't seen any early clips. But uh, I've basically buried most of it. But um, So all you need to do with this stuff um, is I've grown it in the pots, started it off in the pot. So you chip them very similar to um, uh, potatoes. Doesn't want to come out. Um, and then just grow it on in the greenhouse like that. Um, and then it's, it's ready to put out. You need to plant them around uh, I'd say probably about, um, I'll probably get four in here, so I'll plant them around a foot apart. There's plenty of this corn everywhere. Now these come in various colours, uh, you get blue, green, yellow, and then you get like yellow ones with orange spots. So they do come in quite a few colours, so they are quite nice looking vegetables. As I say, they're similar to, similar to a potato, so you'd grow them in exactly the same way as a potato. You know, you can either roast them or boil them or, or whatever. I wouldn't suggest you chip them. Um, now, I'm not quite sure which colours are which now. I did last year, I actually had them sorted out in various colours. Sorry, I'm slightly off, slightly off scene here for you. And I'm just planting them at the same depth as they were in the pots. And I'm just going to put one last one here, which is just off, just off your view. I think I'll probably get about three rows out of these. So I think we've got about 12 in total. So that's that one. Now what you do need to do with these is you need to keep them in ground which is um, sort of well dug and fertile. Um, so, you know, digging, digging the ground over just before you put these in is advisable because last year I had them in um, some ground down the bottom and even though they did grow they were quite sort of stunted um, they didn't grow particularly well I got enough I got enough to um, get some seed for this year because um, you, you know they're basically like potatoes so you just use the same corns again the following year but um, you know the ground needs to be fertile and it needs to be loose so that they can get the the roots in. 
and then you should be away. So I'll just finish off planting these um, and then I'll, uh, I'll show what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so now it's time to put the, uh, the yak on in. Um, and these plants kind of look like that. Um, now this again is another um, sort of tuber type plant and these were very kindly sent to me by Tina and Jason from Allotment Upcycling. So all I'm going to do is basically just bob them in the ground like that. Uh, I don't think they need any support or at least at the minute they don't so I'm just going to put them in. Um, now because these are these are reasonably pot bound as you can see um, what I'm going to do is give them a reasonably good water and hopefully the roots will help them to help them to spread the, the roots out a little bit. Now I'm giving these a little bit more room um, so I'm putting these around 14 inches apart I've got three of these to go in I'll just put that last one in there which is slightly off just off the one side of the screen so that's, that's those in. I'm just going to give them a bit of water um, just to settle them in and then uh, I'll show you these um, in a few weeks time when um, they've started to grow properly. Okay so there you go so the uh, the yakon is planted in that row there and then we've got um, sort of a block there of of the uh, of the other side. I've got basically got three rows of four and that's the uh, the the um, Aloco. So um, so they'll be sort of growing happily along there. Um, you, you can sort of spread them out a little bit more but uh, the uh, the tops are quite um, delicate so what you might want to do is put a bit of fencing around or something like that if you've got pets or um, stray footballs that might go on them um, because they are easily um, snapped. But as I say with the with the um, with the Aloco you can eat both the tops as a salad or you can eat the underneath as a as a like a starch vegetable like potato or whatever um, and the yakon you eat the um, just the, um, the the sort of the rhizomes underneath the ground so uh, that's the um, the yakon and the hilukon okay so just a quick update on the spinach uh, with, with with gardening like a lot of other things you know timing is everything and you can see the spinach here um, this pale green, this pale green row here, it's doing really well. It's reacted well to the rain, and uh, you know it's it's producing some really nice sized leaves now. So uh, you know within a month or two I'll be able to start harvesting this. Now at exactly the same time I planted five boxes of this. Now this is one box here. You can just see the difference between that and that. Um, you know that was put out around three weeks ago, and has grown on really well. Uh, and I've not quite found time to put this out yet, since you can see it's quite struggling in the in the trace. So what I'm going to do now is just put a couple of rows um, up this side of the tunnel, so I've got it either side of the path. But it just goes to show, um, you know, with a timing point of view, you know, if you can get your crops in as soon as you possibly can do, um, you know, you are going to yield so much better crops than um, sort of leaving them to get stressed out in the trays. But timing as it was, um, unfortunately, I didn't find the time to do it. Okay, so there you go. So that's all of the um, you know, the spinach put in. So there's actually three trays worth been put in there, um, and I've basically gone from the back all the way. As long as you can see, I've got them in a perfectly straight line. Not, but anyway, they're going to grow quite nicely, and hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time, they're going to um, pick up and they'll be um, as good as these on this side. All be well. Okay, really quick update on the um, calabrese. As you can see um, in the centre there, they're just starting to form the uh, the florets. So um, it's now time to put in some more seed, which will be uh, the next set of crops. So basically what I'm going to do is crop these, and then um, obviously these plants will come out. So I'll probably crop these in about three weeks. So now I've seen the florets there, it's, it's my sign to put in the seed for the next lot because the next lot will take about three weeks to grow from seed and then uh, they'll be ready to put in this ground to replace these as soon as these are finished. Okay so it's now time to prick out the basil um, and as you can see uh, the plants are doing quite well they're around sort of two or three inches high now uh, so we've got two varieties here this one's the the crimson king and then this one's is the standard sweet basil 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is, is, is sort of prick it out. Now these need to stay um, in the greenhouse. Um, it's a pity you can't smell this, it smells really nice. Um, these need to stay in the greenhouse for another uh, month or so till there's absolutely no chance of any frost. Even though we're at the end of May now, uh, beginning of June, um, there is still an offside, uh, an outside chance that we will get um, um, a bit of frost. So I would recommend you don't put this out until the middle of June. So we need another couple of weeks right there. So the module sizes here, these are kind of two, um, two inch square modules. They're, they're not overly deep. I was going to put a little bit of um, compost in each of these. Now, if you don't have any this big, you know something like something like that will um, something like that will do as well. That's about an inch and a half or so square. But uh, if you can give them a bit more room, um, that's all I do. You don't really need to have anything that's kind of that big. Um, you know the because uh, it will basically take too much room up in the greenhouse if you're not careful. And at, at this time of year, uh, most people have got quite full greenhouses like me. So I've put a bit of compost in the bottom, not too much. This is the clover compost, uh, which is the compost I always use, um, which is ideal for vegetables really because it's got you know, a good couple of months of nutrients in there. Um, if you are going to plant something up into pots for long term, you know, you know, for a year or so, then I suggest you add, add a bit more nutrient to it because it, the, the nutrients in here will probably last a few months, not, a, you know, not as long as a year. But that's the, so I've, I've put about an inch or so of compost in the bottom there. Now with, you'll see me when I'm, when I'm taking plants out of pots and stuff like that, um, if, they're, if they're quite tough plants like um, brassicas or um, sunflowers and things like that, I'll always effectively grab the stalk, which is not necessarily good practice, um, but with, with, with woody plants like sunflowers, um, the stalks are quite hard and you can basically you know, loosen the pot off and take it off and hold, uh, handle it by the stalk. A plant like basil most certainly isn't one of those. You need to be really careful. So, like with like with young brassicas and other young plants, uh, you know, where the stalk is quite delicate, what you need to do is handle it by by its roots, basically, or or by its leaves. Now, the the kind of the theory is, if you break a leaf off, um, a leaf will regrow. If you slightly damage the roots, the roots will regrow. If you damage the stalk, basically the plant's damaged for life. So that's the kind of that's the kind of the logic. So all I'm gonna do is with a in fact I'm not gonna use a classic one because that could possibly snap a wooden lollipop stick. It's always a, a vital piece of equipment in the greenhouse. Um just just go uh, I don't know if you can see that, but just position the camera slightly better so all, all I'm doing is there's the, there's the plant I'm going for there all I'm doing is going as far away from it as I possibly can do and lifting up from the bottom the, the, the first one is always the most difficult what you want to do is get your hand underneath so pull it out like that now I'm handling it only by the root I'll see what I've got I've actually got two there that's just for Mickey Light on the top um, so I'm, what I'm doing is just just by handling the roots like that now I've I've managed to separate uh, the two plants. I've not actually touched the plant yet at all, so I'll just set that one aside. Um, what I'm going to do is just make a little hole in there and sit that one quite gently there. Now I've not touched, the only part of the plant I've touched is the root. Um, going with the second one here, make a little bit of an indention, sit him in there. Then all you need to do is um, go back and fill the, fill the compost up like that. Now as soon as you water these, it's going to water the um, the compost round the, the bottom, but just 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 kind of gently press down with your fingers like that, and really basil's the one plant that, um, or, or or one of the plants that you need to be really careful with, because these are so easily damaged. Um, so as soon as you've got a kind of hole in there, what you can do is then stick your finger on into that hole and lift the whole thing up. And what it what might actually be easier is if you fetch out a whole section like that. Now after you've after you've done this you can you can grow the basil in a number of different ways. I'm going to grow some inside and I'm going to grow some outside. Um, so I'm going to be planting quite a lot of this outside because what I want to do is make um, pesto uh, for pasta. My, my daughter loves pesto and um, I thought it would be nice to to actually make some of our own for a change rather than buying it all. 
So, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'll go for the bigger plants. Is I'm just pulling off as much root as I possibly can do with each plant. Just bobbing that in there. Now, what this will do is it'll it'll give the plant a little bit more chance to sort of grow on, and then basically what it'll be it, it'll enable us to um, plant these out so much easier when they go outside. Um, so it's always better to start at the edge, but what you can do is basically break. So what, all, all I'm doing is handling the compost um, and not the actual plants themselves. Don't worry about the vermiculite, you don't need that anymore. So just bob that in there, there's a bit of weed in there. Like that. And this is why you want a bit of compost in the bottom. Oh, there's not a lot of root on these. Like that. Bob them in the tray. Now these may need a little bit of time to recover. So what I suggest is, because you've compromised the root system, don't put them in direct sunlight. So what I'm going to do, as soon as I've potted these up, um, what I'm going to do is put these under the bench so they're not in direct sunlight. So obviously evaporation is going to be your worst enemy at the moment. Now these roots have been um, slightly compromised. So what I suggest you do is give them a good watering and then um, put them out of, keep them reasonably cool. Basically what you're trying to do is minimise the um, evaporation. Um, so stick them underneath the, uh, the bench so they're not in direct sunlight. Um, and make sure that they're kept reasonably well watered. Um, basil doesn't like to be in too much water. However, because obviously we've pulled some of the roots off, um, whilst we've been teasing these apart. Um, no, I am holding the stalks here a little bit, but I'm being really gentle. Um, you know, you have sort of damaged the roots a little bit. So, um, you know, you do need to give them a bit of water, but don't soak them, you know. You know, make sure that they're kept um, damp, but not overly wet, if, if, if that makes any sense. So we give them a bit of water, and then uh, they should uh, they should recover. Because at, at, at this time, if you leave it any longer than uh, than we've got here, um, they do get too big um, to you know. And the the older they get, the the less likely they are to recover well. Right, so I'll just do these last few, and then I'll uh, I'll show you what they look like as soon as they're finished. So I'll, I'll, I'll just finish this tray. Obviously, I've got I've got three three different varieties of, of uh, basil on the go. Um, I've got the this one, which is the sweet basil, um, and I think this one came from uh, <coughs> Sutton Seeds. This one, um, and then I've got uh, the the uh, the crimson, which is the the dark red one, and I've got these other ones. These came from um, I think these were. Uh, this is just called sweet basil again, but I think this is a different variety to the one I've got here. But um, we'll, we'll have to see how we go. So I'll just finish these off, as I say, and I'll um, I'll show what they look like when they're finished. Okay, and for pots that sort of go in the house, obviously you want something um, a bit bit sort of prettier than a plastic pot. So uh, this is just a pitcher pot, and I've um, I'll just put in a um, an old piece of slate in the bottom. Just to just to block the block the hole. Um, now, what I'll do with this one is um, fill it with fill it with compost, so that the plants can obviously the plants will stay in here. Now, what I'll do is um, I'll get uh, probably about four or five plants, about half a dozen plants, um, and then dot them round. Uh, need a bit more compost. Right, and now what I'll do is I'll dot the dot the plants round. Uh, trying to take as much root again. Obviously I'm handling them by the roots again. Just place them in um, around the edge like that. Uh, I'm not sure if these are going to come apart. Well, I think we'll leave those two together like that. 
Um, and that will be more than enough to fill, fill this pot. Uh, I might just put one in the middle. Now this can sit on your um, your kitchen windowsill, and then when uh, when you're making anything that's um, either pasta or um, pizza or anything like that, you can pull off a few leaves because uh, there's nothing better than fresh herb. Um, now basil's used quite extensively in Italian type cooking, so any pasta or um, or any um, pizzas or you know anything that's Italian really um, you know all you need to do is pull off a few put, you know you know pull off a few leaves that you know the growing tips of the of the plant and that will help it obviously with um, with 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 basil it's it, it's very much a herb um, as in not herbaceous but it's a, you know you, you know it's basically a herb so what you don't want to do is just leave it to grow pull pull the pull the uh, the growing tips off the plant and what that will do is it will encourage it to bush out um, and the plant will react quite well to having uh, been pricked out if you like so you know when you when you pick um, anything off the plant always go for the, the the growing tip there and then what it'll do is it'll encourage the plant to bush out and then you'll get a much better plant for it so um, so that's that finished so all you need to do now is put that in a little pitcher um, tray at the bottom just to uh, just to um, hold this. Obviously, you don't need to water these too much, um, but uh, that'll that'll make a nice addition to the kitchen windowsill. Okay, and as soon as they've had um, a couple of three days um, in the in the shade, they soon should uh, pick up, and then you can put them back into the light. So, I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to point any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Up the Garden.